and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, this is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble, and it goes until midnight Eastern Daylight Time. We'll have our citizens panel in just a little while, but first we got to check in with an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is out uh, from the west coast of the United States. Please join us in welcoming the fabulous Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. Hey, Larry. You know, we were talking about uh, uh, technology products that you liked, and uh, you said you never had buyer's remorse. On the uh, Apple Watch, yeah. Was there there anything you you, uh, bought you thought, wow, this is a waste of money? Most stuff. Most stuff. (laughs) Well, you know, especially when I had a lot of money in San Francisco, I would buy every gadget that came out. You know, uh, I remember when I started making money, the first thing I bought was a 3D camera. Remember, they had a they had a 3D camera. Never, no, I didn't hear that. What happened? They had a 3D camera, and you could shoot things in 3D, and then you send it off to the company, and they would send it back to you with these. Do you know how you used to have things like uh, album covers and so on that were in 3D? They were called lenticular pictures. And they kind of had like you could run your finger across them and it was rippled, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And that worked because it came, you could see it two different angles by looking at this lentic, lentic, lenticular photograph. So what this would do is this would shoot lenticular um, photographs and you would send it off the company and they would send you back these lenticular photographs of in 3D where I could look at them and there were my animals and 3D and my friends in 3D. I want a Robin Williams sticking his hand at the camera in 3D. I don't know where they are now. They're in a, they, I know I didn't throw them away. They got to be in storage. But uh, and, and I'm trying to remember what the name of the camera was. Uh, but they uh, they stopped making it after a while. And they, but you had to you had to send the stuff away to them to get the stuff developed. I never showed you any of those pictures. No, I'd love to see those. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was the first thing I, I bought when I had money. Okay. You've got a museum in storage. Uh, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. i got all my shows. I have lots of bubs on, on tapes here. I've been getting got to go through those sometimes. Do you have, uh, did you keep the laser discs? I got rid of them when I left California. Uh, they, they would not be worth shit today. You know. But I always thought those were kind of ahead of their time and I thought they were cool because of the size of an album and yeah the only thing is the the DVD came along and replaced them I mean these were huge discs folks these were like 12 inch discs with a big hole in the middle and uh, you would watch a movie and then halfway through the movie you'd have to stop it and turn the disc over okay and play the other side uh, there were some machines that came out one of which I bought where it would automatically switch to the other side, but uh, that was not a that was not a big deal. Um, so, um, but no, it's, uh, I, uh, laser disc. I had hundreds of laser discs, and they were they were not cheap either. You know, but, that was like mid eighties, yeah. and that's why I'm sitting here with no money. <laughs> you know, because I bought bought shit like that. You know. <laughs> Oh, no, these laser discs are going to be worth a fortune because everybody someday will have a laser disc player. So the, so the DV, well, how long a run did they have? Because the DVDs came out. I would say they were, they, well, the cognizanti, like myself, who wanted to watch movies and watch them uh, in rather pristine condition rather than these grainy DVD, you know, VHS tapes that they, they were selling. Uh, it had a small market share, uh, but man, the people who were laserdisc freaks were like loyal, loyal laserdisc freaks. Um, what happened is they didn't know how to merchandise it. Um, when they first came out, they were called laserdiscs, 
But MCA decided uh, to release Universal Films on Laser. But they changed the name of the process from LaserDisc to DiscoVision, which I thought was the stupidest name I ever heard. You know, that's a bad, bad. It sounds name, to me but, like you know. you're going to have to run, watch endless movies of uh, of uh, John Travolta dancing. <laughs> you know. Disco. Well, yeah, just disco had such a negative connotation. Well, they thought it had a positive connotation, but they called it disco vision, and that kind of hurt it uh, badly because they felt that they didn't want to say laser disc because then laser had this connotation of that's something that cuts into something. You know, you use lasers to cut into people's bodies. You use in science fiction, you use laser guns to kill people. So they didn't like the idea. You know, so. Um, so a- anyway, it was uh, it, it was uh, uh, yeah. uh, what do you call it a, 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 a move because they felt the word laser was negative. After a while, everybody started calling them laser discs, and they started merchandising them as laser discs. But because in the very beginning they didn't have a, a good game plan. That throws you off, you know. That that sets the tone for everything after that, and so you, it was. They were a success among people like myself. I mean, nobody felt that there was a better, um, a better um, delivery system for films than. Yeah, you're the only one I know that had them. So. And laser discs, yeah. So you know, um, remember you had a Frankenstein movie we watched. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just, I, I, I loved them. I, I had this, I had this store, Laser City, down on Market Street, that used to, like, I go down there. The, the things got released on Fridays, but they would get them in or on Tuesdays, and they would be in the storage. And I would go in, and and he let me buy them early. You know, I was that much of a nut about it. You know, and it was right on the way to work too. Do you, do you remember how much they cost? They were about thirty-four dollars a piece. Okay. Well, I mean, compare that to DVDs that then brought that price down to somewhere in the neighborhood of I don't know what. What are fifteen? Or fifteen, something like that. Yeah. And the quality on on uh, on DVDs was much better. You know, and you didn't have to turn them over, and they were small, and you know, here you had to have like, uh, I mean, I literally had to have cabinets built to put my laser discs in because they were that <laughs> they were that unwieldy and that huge so you got rid of them yeah but they'd be worthless i'd say they wouldn't be worth anything no. you know uh, because then they brought out all the same films on dvd so it, it's not like I, I i do have a few a few of them that i saved they're still in storage uh, uh there were three james bond pictures that they released, and I went in and got them early, as I said, and then by the time Friday came along, they had to pull them off the shelves because the movie company was complaining because there was a supplemental, uh, on some of these discs, they had a supplemental audio track, so you could listen to somebody going, and this is where in the movie, blah, 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 and they kind of talk you through the movie and all the the things that are happening and, and so on. Uh, it was on a second audio track that these things had available to them. And the movie company didn't like that. They thought that was violating the film or doing something or another, so they made them pull them back and take that track off. Um, and I have them with that track on there, so that would make them valuable, kind of, you know. But it was a big waste of money on my part. I spent thousands of dollars on laser discs. You know, but I had a lot of fuck you money back then. Well, nothing in technology, uh, the old stuff, never becomes worth a lot of money generally. Also, tax-wise, I could take them off on my taxes because I was in broadcasting, and that was like uh, media, and I was buying media to study it and whatever and use it. So that was all. All my laser discs were taxed. It wasn't a total waste. No. I mean, you know, brought my tax bill down. Yeah. Also, anytime I bought recordings, bought tapes, bought uh, bought uh, equipment, whatever, you know. So, so now I just sit in this stupid little studio here and 
they don't make a living out of it. Well. Last year, uh, somebody uh, dumped off a uh, one of the first Apple computers from the seventies at a at a uh, Goodwill store, and turned, it was worth about forty thousand dollars. Well, the first one, first actually, the first Apple computer uh, was made out of wood. Yeah, this was it. Yeah, this was the wood one. Uh-huh. Oh, God, it's probably worth more than $40,000. Maybe it was worth a quarter million. I forget, but somebody just they gave it away to Goodwill. and they Really? <laughs> they so, yeah, there weren't many of them made. and uh... There were only about two or three, actually. Uh, you know, they made them out of wood because they, they, they didn't have it. You know, they did them in the garage. And so they had to have something to put the parts in. So they created this wooden box to put them in, you know. But then finally, when they came out with the original Apple, it was foreign plastic, okay. But prior to that, it was a wood box, yeah. So, uh, so uh, geez, so somebody really fucked up. Huh? Somebody made a bad decision, yeah. And and did the money go to Goodwill? Uh, Goodwill, uh, they uh, they did something good with the money. I think they sold it and. Uh, Put the money back in their uh, charity thing. Really? Wow. Yeah. You know, I find that just amazing. I, that that's an amazing story. I didn't realize that it happened. Yeah, it wasn't worth like. It wasn't over a million dollar. It wasn't like crazy money, but it was definitely worth something. Well, it, should, it, it probably is worth a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money because that is so iconic. That's such so historical. You know, I mean, that isn't just. Hey, we're uh, we we found this old computer. Uh, how much is it worth? Well, it was an early one, so it's worth thirty thousand dollars. No, that is the first Apple handcrafted by uh, uh, by Steve Wozniak, uh, the true genius. Yeah, I don't know how somebody would come into, into possession of that because there were so few of them made. I, it it could be that uh, you know somebody just a real nut like me said, "Oh, a computer, I'll buy it." You know. What it, could you do with a computer like that? They couldn't have. Well, you would much. have you would have to be a real programmer to be able to even run a computer like that, because I think a lot of that was machine what they call machine language, and it wasn't like you just typed on a keyboard, and and, and uh, wonderful things happened. You know, I mean, the early computers were you were lucky if you had a keyboard. I remember when I got my first computer, it was an Atari. And it had a keyboard. and uh, you, But you could also play games. It was created to be a game machine, but it also could be used as a computer. And it had 40 characters across the screen. And um, I got a copy of... Somebody made me a copy of VisiCalc, which was the first spreadsheet program ever created. It, it literally turned the industry around, the computer industry around, because you always need what's called a killer app, something that is so pervasive that it makes it, a certain group of people want to go out and buy it. And VisiCalc was a spreadsheet. In the old days, my business manager would sit there with pen and ink or pencils and, and write in numbers, and then with his adding machine, add up the row of numbers on the spreadsheet and put that in. Here, you could just type in the numbers, right? And then at the bottom, it would total them out. You know, so it just absolutely changed everything for accounting. And VisiCalc was that killer app. And they had this killer app, and they did it for uh, the uh, PCs. I think they did it for Apple, and they did it for the Atari. And I brought my business manager over, who was now cross-eyed from doing all those spreadsheets. <laughs> And I said, tell me what this is. And I showed it to him. And he started typing away. He says, it's a spreadsheet. I said, yeah. He says, wait a minute, let me go to the bottom. He says, I can put in some kind of thing and it tells it to total the thing. He said, I got to get one of these. So we both went out and got IBM computers. Uh, they didn't even have hard drives in those days. They had, we had two floppy disk drives. We were living large. And uh, that that made the industry visit Calc. You know, made people want to go out and get it. a certain group of people go out and get it, and other things followed. And before you know it, everybody's buying computers. But, the IBM computers are probably like four thousand then. 
They were. It was about three thousand. Yeah. 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 Um, it was a beautiful machine. I mean, nice design, and you know. Uh, but uh, he just, he was just, he went crazy over the fact. We, he immediately went out. He, he had a friend and three of us at the same time got a deal on some IBM computers. And it all started with my Atari. There you go. Yeah. You're a trailblazer. Yeah. Meanwhile, Atari went out of business. And uh, <laughs> all, all the people that created the Atari computer went over to Amiga. And created the Amiga computer, which was a very good graphics computer. It was maybe the to me the Atari was the best computer ever created for home use, it really was. And um, you could do video with it. That's why I bought one so I could uh, I could do some video editing. And uh, it was it was incredible. It was all started. It was all, all created by the people who were at Atari and created the Atari computer, which was meant to be a graphics computer. So that's the history, folks. And then the Amiga went the way of all the flesh. But, it, you know, for a while, I mean, we had a thing called the Video Toaster that f- f- switched video and all of that. Do you remember I had an Amiga? Do you remember that at all? I remember the Video Toaster. Okay, so it was in an Amiga is what it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's my history with computers. How about your history with computers? Let's. This uh, is the dawn of technology. Well, I'll tell you, my first computer was given to me by uh, a friend. This was in 1987, and it was in, it was made by Epson. Epson, yeah. And it was. Uh, I remember he said new. It cost four thousand dollars. Eighty-seven, four thousand dollars. A lot of money. And literally, all I could do with it, I could. Uh, you could type. It was like and save stuff. It was like a word processor. Yeah. And it. Could literally do. I think it was, was it the MS DOS system or whatever. Wait a minute. So you actually have been computer literate at one point in your life? Yeah, actually, when they were pretty new, it was '87. Really? Yeah, and it, all, all I could do was type on it. That's all I did with it. Wow. It was wow. Pre-internet. Well, I didn't know about you then. You definitely well, I didn't keep that. Didn't keep that very long. I remember that. Yeah. And then since then, you haven't known how anything works. No, and then Epson, I think, went out of business and just did printers after that. Just for giggles, because we have people listening who have never heard us together before, uh, tell them what kind of phone you have. I have a flip phone. <laughs> how old is it? I think it's 12, although I can't text. I mean, it still is able to make phone calls? I can make, it makes very good phone calls. Really? Are you on it right now? No. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to get that much radiation in my ear. Oh, I see. Okay. So, you, so, you, so you, in your home, you actually have a corded phone, is it? or is I'm, it, I'm on a landline, yes. You're on a landline. Uh, because I have a landline here that I'm forced to have from my cable company. Because they go, well, here's the deal. You get this, and then we give you the phone. And I go, but I don't want the phone. I've got a phone. I've got an iPhone. I don't need that. Most people don't have wired phones at home anymore. I know. But if you go out and get cable service, they want you to have this stupid phone. So I do have a wired phone that's wired to my cable company. It's 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 what they call VoIP, but it's it it's it's like a regular phone, and I never use it. I I can't even I can't even remember the phone number for it. <laughs> And I, it was my main phone number for a while. But, I mean, um, uh, I, I know very pe- few people who now have wired phones in their homes. If, if, uh, uh, of, let's say, uh, younger age, okay? Oh, I don't think any young people have them. Yeah, you know, I think my friend Shecky still has a wired phone. I think so. He's but, old school. But nobody has the phones where you pick them up and there's a cord on it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Do you have a wireless device for your oh, phone? Oh, no. I don't trust those. Oh, so you actually have a cord going to the phone? Yeah, into the wall. No, but, I mean, going from the phone to your he- he- handset. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Where did you find one of those? They still have them. Really? You can get them at Fry. Because most people, <laughs> what they do is, let's say they have a wired landline, Okay. But they hook that up to a wireless uh, Yeah, I never phone. like those wireless things. They always, I don't know. Why? 
You like I having you like you being don't get good reception. I don't know. You you like being tethered. I like to be tethered. You, you, you your life is tethered. Well, if we in a in a five foot apartment, you get a lot of room with a fifteen foot cord. <laughs> Yeah, because a lot of people, I remember in the old days, a lot of people got these really long cords for the headset mm -hmm. so they could walk around a little more than they normally did. But now people have, um, you know, uh, well, I'm not going to try. And, I'm, why teach an old dog new tricks, right? We can't change at this age, no. I, I mean, I'm trying to think, is there anything that I am, I am locked in on that I can't go to the next step in technology? No. But I keep wondering why they, because why they keep developing technology with stuff you don't need. You know, I mean, they I keep know. improving the. Here's the new iPhone, and you know what they're selling in the new iPhone when they when they when they're trying to sell the iPhone. Look at this camera. It takes it's better pictures camera, than yeah. it ever did before, and it goes. It's got a wide screen. It's got It's got this and that and so on and so forth. And nobody ever says, and by the way, the sound is crystal clear when you're making a phone call. They never even talk about the they never, features. They shouldn't even call it a phone. But they really don't. Well, they call it an iPhone, so, you know, you've got the, you've got the name there. But, I mean, it's like they don't, it, 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 the phone quality, the fact that it's a telephone, which was the main reason it exists anyway, you know, because you can use it wherever you are and call somebody. They never even bring that up anymore. No, look at the camera we've got here. And, uh, you know, uh, you can have an emojis for text and so on. But never do they mention the fact that it's a phone any longer. So, you know, what the hell? Yeah. yeah. I'll stick with the flip. You'll stick with the flip. That's my boy. <laughs> He ain't going nowhere without his flip. <laughs> well, the first flip I ever had was a Motorola. Motorola made the first flip, and you know what it what it was made like? The uh, the uh, communicator in Star Trek. You flipped it open just like they did on the communicator on. Well, you never watched Star Trek, right? I haven't seen Star Trek. Yeah. Who who hasn't seen Star Trek? I haven't seen Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. What I have like you? Ty, what I don't ha like those type that genre of movie. What's the like What's the last movie you went to? Oh my God! I haven't been to a theater in years. Really? I watch them when I go to my sister's. I watch things on net. I like noir movies. So you like what movies? Noir. Noir. The thing I saw that the, the thing I, I just saw the movie that you you saw being filmed the Bogart movie. They, oh oh, Dark Passage. Yeah, that was a good one. That was done in 1947, I think, or 48. Yeah. yeah and you, yeah. That it's, was good. It, it, nothing more recent than that that you really I enjoy? I don't like the new stuff, no. Really? Mm -mm. Do you realize I'm, you have become an old codger? I think so. In fact, you were an old codger when you were in your 20s. I think in my high school, yeah. I just... Why? What, what? What? What's the gene in you? How did your parents? Uh, did they do something to you that? No, I think. I think I might have a touch of autism, so I or Asperger's. And I think it's just I really cannot deal with any kind of change. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, so the flip phone is your is the furthest you've gone in technology. Yeah. Because I've offered you phones, and other people have offered you phones, right? Yeah, actually, you know, I do have one technological thing that I actually like. Somebody gave me a GPS. Okay. So I found that, uh, boy, when you, because when you see, when you get gigs, people will give you the worst directions in the world. So that has actually helped me quite a bit. Well, the first time I got one in a car, most people didn't have them. Somebody would say, "Well, are you going to come visit me?" And I say, "Yeah. What's your address?" And she gave me. They gave me the address. They said, "Do you want the directions?" I said, "Forget it. I don't need it." And I would just pump it into the GPS, and it would take me wherever I wanted to go. Yeah. For a while there, it was, however, taking me through bad neighborhoods to get somewhere. And I figure somebody at the uh, GPS company was had some friends in, in like, uh, some of these bad parts of town who uh, were going to mug you uh, because... <laughs> 
they had the thing lead you through, you know, like the worst part of town. But I, I, that's another story on another day. Hey, it yeah. looks like we're suddenly running out of time, Larry. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of times we do a couple of calls every time we do this. And we're going to do two short ones. Uh, no, but no, but I, I always say, I said, I don't know how I'm going to get through two of these, and and I just get through them with you. You get me to. I tell bring you story. to life. You bring me to life. You give me a will to live, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Giving everybody a will to live except himself. It's Larry exactly. Bubbles Brown. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hi there, everybody. How are you? Uh, I pushed uh, pushed the button a little early. That's the drugs I'm taking. Making me me wonky. Making me wonky. Anyway, how are you? How are you? Good evening. It's good to see you. Well, I can't see you. But I could see you if you call our citizens panel. Uh, I'm going to uh, put the, uh, let me see here, let me open up the Skype line. Where, where's Skype? Oh, there it is. Okay. And wait for Skype to load in, which doesn't take that long. It's probably the fastest loading in of anything that I have. Unless it's not working. Yeah, unless it's not working. Let me see here. Okay. So the lines are now open. If you look at your Skype, if, you're, if you've are if got me there, you'll see that my green light just went on. So you know that. By the way, um, Echo, what's my current appointment? Currently, this calendar query is not supported. Oh, I see. Okay. Anyway, it's not, not supported? Okay. Uh, Echo, what time is it? The time is 10.32 p.m. Okay. Good. Uh, she's my only caller so far. <laughs> okay. Uh, Josh Wheeler tried. To, Josh Wheeler's having a hard time getting in. Let me see here. Oh no, I don't want to go to the next. Uh, remind me, remind me later. All of a sudden, it said, "Do you want to update your?" Oh, we had, wow. Let me see here. Let me call Josh and see if if I can do it with him for him. I don't know what his problem is. Let me see if he answers. Hey there. Hey there, Josh. Were you trying to get a hold of us? I was, but it wouldn't go through. It wouldn't go through. You were having problems, huh? Let yeah, me it said see. Gab not unavailable. The gab net not available. Oh, boy. Or, yeah, unavailable. Set, I get this every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. And it just made me download a new version, so it's yeah. probably got something to do with that. Yeah, it probably has something to do with that. Anyway, but we're uh, let me see here. Let's uh, let's go here, and there you are. Hello, Josh. How's your hello? Hi, how's it going this evening? Oh, pretty good. Oh, pretty good. Uh, oh, bad. I met Kathleen is calling. Hold on a second. Let me see here. Get her on. There we go. Uh, okay, is she in there? Hello, Kathleen. Is she there? What's the problem? Why are you having the same problem I had? We're having a problem tonight, huh? Yeah, some kind of Skype issue. I don't think it's you. It's because I've had this before, and then some other people have said they have okay, it. Okay, let me... You've got to call two or three times sometimes. And, for and like there's a, Phil Meyer, and... Yeah, we got Phil. We got Phil. Okay. Yes, hey, how you that's doing? That's all that matters. Let me try calling Kathleen here. Uh, try and get her on the show. Effort. Yeah, I think that's what you have to do sometimes. You have to call them back or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not last night it's not I ringing. had trouble oh, getting through. Uh, yes. I, it was like call declined twice. Yeah. And tonight I yeah. got through right away. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Okay, much. I called you. I called you. Okay, Thank now, you. let me uh, let me uh, uh, get these people uh, in here. Oh, you, we got to get you in the third spot here, Kathleen, because you were in the second first spot last night. So I've got to uh, Bob Q Kazoo. Wow, I love the names you people use. It's like, let's try and fake Alex out, okay? Why is your why is your why is your picture green tonight? Oh, can't we? Corner. <laughs> I hate you, Sean. What? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> that, uh, did, wait a minute. Did he do something? Did your son do something? No. Your picture looks green tonight. 
No, in less than uh, five minutes, he's made 75 cents because I've said bad words. Oh, okay. It's, crazy green. Not, not, it's probably because of the background. No, I think, I think, uh, who knows? Who knows? Hey, uh, why don't you just give him GabNet bucks? Uh, Alex will yes. send you a I mean, bunch of them. You're fine enough, but usually you were a lot more colorful last night. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll go change my shirt or take my shirt off. I don't know. Yeah, don't, you... yeah, don't take your shirt off. Uh, well, I'm I mean, not. I would not. <gasps> well, it, 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 yes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, what, would, what would your son think of you if you suddenly started going topless on this show? I would never do that. He's already pissed off because Adam and Eve plucked the apple. Yeah, he was like, that. really, Mom? Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. we have to wear clothes because, you know... I'm serious. I'm cool with that. <laughs> For like a year, he bitched about it. Yeah, really? He did. Yeah, well, he should know that in Ibiza, when I, we were there and I was shooting, uh, you, uh, you you flashed the camera. and uh, Well, remember, you're like, and well, I, here, I, take your top off. And I said, no, there's nobody topless. And then, you know, like 15 minutes later, someone was like, fring, and you're all, take it off. And then I took it off. You're all, whoa, whoa, whoa. So no, right. No, no, but uh, you well, you were topless on the beaches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but and I have a couple shots of that. But well, there was one where you went room, and I I I used the shot, but I blurred it out because I had so much respect for you. Remember the gal that was tweezing. And I figured someday shot? you would have a son who didn't want to see your tits on a video. Oh, I, I thought you did it because you didn't want to get thrown off of Facebook. No. Yeah. <laughs> is why you blurred it out. There was no Facebook back then. Well, you no. knew there was going to be. You invented the internet. Huh? <laughs> you invented podcasting. I meant a podcasting. Right. But, well, yeah. you know. So. No, remember that gal that was tweezing her crotch with the oh, guy oh, that was oh, like oh, 90 oh. years I should old? Get, I, should, I should get that video out. That was, oh, that was classic. Tell that me, was tell, th while I'm getting this call online here. Uh, give, tell me, uh, tell them what, what she was doing. It was, it was amazing. So, you know, I'm laying out in the sun and all of a sudden Alex nudge, nudges me. He's like, oh my gosh, look at the camera and look down that way. And I look and this lady literally was tweezing her crotch. Doink, doink, doink. With some guy, whoever her husband was, she was like 30 something. Her husband had to have been what, 90? But she was sitting there literally... You know, Sitting there. I guess giving herself a Brazilian one hair at a time. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to hurt. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's one at a time. Maybe it hurts less than all of them at once. I think the wax thing is, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt because it's hot, you know. It doesn't hurt? I well, don't know. I, I've been waxed on my back and, and my shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Ouch. And uh, it didn't hurt. Didn't hurt? No. Rip. Yeah, but yeah. are you a hairy person or no? I mean, no, I, 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 no, I don't I know. I, I've never asked. There. I've never asked Kathleen this. Did you ever get a Brazilian at all? One of those wax jobs. Wax. No. Yeah. I, I, I like the Norwegian babushka. The, <laughs> 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 I mean, who cares? You are so fucking funny. My Sometimes God. it gets Go annoying. Wrong. It's a Norwegian babushka. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. I'll be back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be back. Where are you going? You're gonna go get a Brazilian? <laughs> um, wait a minute, he's he's leaving now. Uh, I offended Phil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, yeah. That's my job. Yeah. Huh? That, I said that's my job. That's Josh's, Phil. Josh's job to offend Phil. Uh, how you doing, uh, my good friend? Jason? Jason. <laughs> I'm doing. Hey, go easy on me. I'm taking He's this drug. Old, I'm I taking this drug now, and I, I have a hard time. Co I used to be able to just go, I'll start the show here, start the show there, hit the button there. There's always something I fuck up. Like tonight, I started the video stream about 30 seconds late, which doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the show, but. Was it they I, say first your knees go and then I forget well, no what no but I'm, I'm taking this pill for my for my uh, neuropathy uh, lyrica or a form of lyrica and uh, it is uh, I'm I'm a little uh, loopy you know things that I normally can do pretty easily I like I post my show and it takes me a lot longer 
Is Did I hear you say the other day that you are going to go see a chiropractor? I'm going um, Tuesday. Tuesday to a chiropractor. Oh. I think you'll like it. Well, I don't. I'll gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which reminds me, I got to write Bubs and see if he can do his call an hour earlier that day. But uh, you know, I'm. Uh, well, going... I got you beat. What? I fell today, and I fell hard. Did you really? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I hit my head, but I have a headache. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I've had four different ice packs on at the same time. I took an 800 milligram ibuprofen. You have and... some of those because I have those. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got them from the doctor. I, I, the, I don't the, remember those are how great. old they're they are. the best ibuprofens ever. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, I was uh, on a measure today mm -hmm. in a doctor's office, a dentist's office. Yeah. And he uh, had some carpet tile samples and he put them down on top of the carpet that was there. Mm -hmm. And I walked across them. And, and I and I went, uh, you know, my feet came out from under me Oof. and I went, I went, I almost face planted. I was maybe three inches away from a marble uh, desk. Uh, top, mm -hmm. uh, and I fell to the floor. Uh, I I hurt. <laughs> when, I, when I when I went down on Broadway, yeah. Uh, the Is worst, that the one you did on Facebook? Yeah, yeah. I took a I took what's called a buster on uh, on Broadway, and yeah. um, uh, what's horrible is it's if I did this and I was twenty years old, everybody would right. go, "Oh, he's clumsy." When you're my age, everybody comes to your rescue. Oh, are you okay? You know, did you break your hip? You know, I could just you... see this guy. <laughs> Is he going to sue me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually, I, I felt I, pl I plots right in front of the George M. Cohan statue. Yeah. In, in, you know where that is in Times Square? No, I've never, I've been to Times Square. I think it's George M. Cohan that that's supposed to be. Oh. Um, who wrote, give my regards to Broadway. <laughs> I, I, I'm always looking for sabaret carts, you know. Sabret. Yeah. What do you mean, sabaret? <laughs> sabaret. You're a New Yorker you know? and you call it sabaret? It's sabrets. Yeah. Well, you know, I like the uh, the chili onions that they have. Well, I also like the flies that come with them. Well, yeah, you that's know. extra protein. Because all that food outdoors, I never, I never liked outdoor food. I always was very suspicious of outdoor food. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And here in New York, we have a plethora of outdoor food things. I mean, well, the yeah. food carts, of course, they got them everywhere, though, now. You have them in San Francisco, yeah. and the food cart business is a big business, and, and because they, they turn out really interesting, delicious food. So. Yeah. But those things, you know, they, they were sitting in this hot water all day that flies were swimming in. No, nah, they, they sell them fast. I mean, they, they, you know, Times Square, they're moving those hot dogs. They got the pretzels. They got the chestnuts. Come yeah. on. You know. He just he, he likes it better when you can't see all the flies in the kitchen. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, they got fly mustard. They, they just you know, squirt it on there. Yeah, you know, yeah. They take the flies, put them in the mustard. So anyway, you know yeah. Is. So any, anyway, I, uh, I just you know, uh, do you have any carts like that in uh, Tracy, or is Tracy oh. cartless? No, we have oh. carts. I mean, yeah. we're a huge Hispanic community, so man, we have some of the best, best food. I mean, tamales, elote, which is corn. I do, mean, do all you, that. Do you have fruit. Do you have enchiladas? Yes. And Ench yeah, yes. and, and, tor and, and tortillas? <laughs> yes. You have tortillas, As a matter of fact, I just downed two tortillas because I made no, chili. No, it's, and pronounced, pronounced, it it's, pronounced, chili. it's pronounced tortilla. Tortillas. Yeah, just from here on in, when you meet your Mexican no, those friends, are, those call them tortillas, islands, see what happens. They're tortillas. Tortillas. Uh, tortillas? <laughs> and enchiladas. <laughs> and tamales. So, well, you know, I'm the you, one that fell today. <laughs> yes. It's funny being Mexican and you go to all these restaurants and they serve the tamales. And it's like they never cook it the way that I was raised eating them. You know, you don't have them in the corn husks. You make them in the corn husks. Then you take them out of the corn husk when you're ready to eat them and you fry them in some butter till they're nice golden oh, brown and crispy. Good. And hey, mm, I've so been good. claiming Mexican, but what's the other half? Irish? Yeah. I'm a Mexican. 
<laughs> My son is Mexwegian, Mexican Norwegian. Mexwegian. Mexwegian. He's Mexican Mexwegian. Norwegian. You know something? I would. That would be really fun to send him off to um, the. Uh, what's that? Uh, you know the D- DNA thing. Uh, Find out if yeah. he's actually your kid. Ancestry dot com. <laughs> no, I know. No, no, it's not mine. I know it's not. He's not mine. Look at him. He's too good looking. You know. Well, uh, you said he's Mexwegian, so you mean he can get a tan? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a guy that calls from Norway. Alex when goes in the younger. sun and starts smoking. <laughs> he was really husky when he was younger. So when he was like three, the man's gone. You know, I'd buzz his hair. And I put his swim trunks on him, and he'd be tan. I put a gold chain on him. He looked like a little Tony Soprano. Yeah, yeah. Well, I. Uh, That's uh, Italian. What? Uh, no, uh, you were you were asking what happens when I go in the sun, uh, Jason? Uh, uh, I bleach. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Yeah. So. Did I would too actually in the summertime like I get I would get blonde around like the outline of all does, my hair. Does anybody remember the worst suntan they ever got? Yeah, I've been burned because I remember it. Uh, I was in Ibiza with uh, with uh, 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 my newswoman Lori Thompson, and we went out to the beach. And it, you know, this was after the Olympics, and we decided, hey, Barcelona. Yeah, Close enough. Let's go to Ibiza and spend a week. So we went to Ibiza. And um, we were out in the sun every day getting our tan. We were looking pretty damn right, okay? Uh, And uh, finally, the last day, we figured out we got this tan. You know, we got the base. We'll just sit out here and really get it so when we get back to New York, we'll be able to have everybody go, boy, you look great. You know, you were out in the sun a lot. And, and and that night, uh, I got the worst. Ca- oh. My arms started getting numb. She and I thought I was having a stroke. Poison. No, it wasn't. Some, I don't know. I don't, sun poisoning. I've, ne- I've heard that term. I've never had what I call sun poisoning. It did not affect heat my, stroke. didn't affect it, my, it, yeah. but that was, I had heat stroke. And we had to call a doctor. And yep. I mean, I was so much in pain, I could barely lie in bed. You know, I just wanted to stand up rather than have the sheets on me. You know, I even just had linen on top of me, and it was... And finally, about 3 in the morning, I went into a real sweat, and all the pain went away, and I was fine, and the stroke was over with, and I went back, and everybody said, my God, we can't let you in. You're black, you know. <laughs> I mean, that, you know the Mediterranean I just, sun is is really strong, but it's a di- uh, you get a different kind of tan in, me- in under a Mediterranean sun. You get a uh, uh, a real burnt. no. You don't get a, no. You don't burn. I did no you, sardinia. Uh, I didn't. I didn't burn. I've ne- yeah. That was the first time I ever burned in in the Mediterranean sun. But it gives you this kind of really nice red. It's it's hey, a, the, the Mexican with his hand up yes. says he is probably going to say he never burns. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, I, I burn once a year. I yes, burn. Mexican but, with your hand up. So one time I was in Mexico, I was yeah. at the Moon Palace, and this one guy, he's in a pool, and he looked black as could be. You know, yeah. he just looked like a black man, except for he had no facial features like a black man. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm like, what? What are you? You know, I was really, I'm just confused because you know, like I said, no facial features of of a being African descent or anything. Yeah. And then I saw him reach for a drink and one of his rolls lifted and stretched out and you saw he was white as white could be underneath his rolls. <laughs> and he'd just been in the sun that much that he he seriously he was yeah. black looking. Yeah. Well we came back from Ibiza looking pretty ripe. You know what I heard about Ibiza today? I was watching BBC television. And a uh, terrible thing with Ibiza. Trump is going to buy it? Well, no, I used to love the island because very few people went to Ibiza. It was it, great. You know, it was great when we went to it. There weren't a lot yeah. of people there. We could go out to that beach at, uh, at uh, um, uh, where was it? I can't remember the name of the uh, I've never been there. Uh, name it wasn't the Mallorca. Was no, it Mallorca's Mallorca? another we, island. No, uh, no. Yeah, it wasn't that. No, we were in Ibiza. But no, but I'm saying yeah. we, uh, no, we went to another island, but that was Formentera. It's a very small right. island next to Ibiza. Uh, but there was this, I'm trying to remember the name of it, the beach we used to go to, and uh, where Vedra, the big rock, rock yes. outcropping was. And um, 
it, you know, we didn't see that many people. I mean, it was okay. It was, you know, and we were there when it was, I think, still in season. Yes. You know, but now it is so overcrowded. It is such a, a crowd scene. That the story they were running is it's the number one um, polluter and trash place in all of the Mediterranean. And perhaps it has the most garbage per person of any place in the world. You know, the same thing happened to a place I used to go diving a lot that was uh, not popular with the with the masses. It's called Turks and Caicos, and it's in the British West yeah, Indies. Yeah, it's, and it's, Turks and Caicos all had a building boom, and then all the pollution from the building boom, the sheetrock and stuff that they dumped in the water, uh, damaged yeah. the reefs. And because it, it had it's it had a barrier reef that was you know almost as large as uh, it's the second uh, largest barrier reef and in the world. And, uh, but all the building pollution, uh, started to destroy it and the mm -hmm. fish life. Yeah. Uh, you know, and from didn't the first all time. that actually stem from them changing their laws to be able to be a tax haven for American billionaires? I don't know that they are. Turks and Caicos is I'm a, pretty sure they are. British That's... West Indies. It's the Dutch islands, I think. Boy, that, I'm so out uh, of it. I can't remember. Sure I, I, I can't remember the, the name of the island, the name of the beach, Kathleen. Because and I always remember it. And I just now I'm, you know. Yeah, hey, you'll remember it about four in the morning. Oh yeah, four in the morning. I'll come up. I'll come up with it in the middle of the show and suddenly spout yeah. it out. Uh, but that beach was very. It was not easy to get to. You had to know nope. where it was. You know. And mm -hmm. um, when we went there, it was, you know, it had enough people there, but you had to know how to get out there. And it wasn't close yeah, to anything. Yeah, but it wasn't packed. We didn't It wasn't feel one like of the easy we, beaches. We were squeezed I'll in. I'll bet if we went there now, we couldn't find a parking space. Oh, that's pathetic. That's you know, sad. I mean, it's got to be, it'll be, it would just be, I'm sure, I would love to see a, a picture of the beach. Um, yeah, hey, Alex, I know what beach it was. It was the one that was right by the water. Yeah, it was the one right by the water. <laughs> One what, with sand. No, what, what was the name of that beach? <laughs> Damn it. I, I, I used to know hey, it. Hey, like Siri, a, what is the most popular beach in, Ibi in Ibiza? Okay. Please speak English. On the web for what is the most popular beach in Ibiza? Check it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, best beaches and party beaches. Yeah. Uh, okay, come on. Uh, right. Okay, the best beach. The White Isle Beach. No. Uh, the, the White Isle is known for hedonism. Uh, spiritual spirituality and barefoot bohemia. Oh, a Barinus? A no, Barinus? No, B e n i r r a s. No. no. Uh, there's another one. Cala Carbo. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it was. Cal Thank Cala you. Overa? No, I'll tell you what it was. It's Cal de Hort was the name of the beach. That was uh, okay. It. There's a Calamastrella. Yeah. Uh, Calamazui. It was Cal yeah. de Hort. Thank you for coming up with the Cal because that they. You got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of callas. Yeah. Uh, but I bet Caldo Hort, you can't even find it. You know, it, it was you had to you had to know where it was. It was just an outdoor, and then it, it was beautiful because it was this beach, and then there was this big right rock outcropping in the water called Vedra, which has all kinds of legends about it and so on, and uh, you just sit there lying in the sun. Just bacon like toast and uh, and we uh, go and have breakfast. Oh, we go up. Well, I've got I've got video of you having oh, paella, so the good. best paella in the world. Yes. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever have? Uh, uh, I had paella in Barcelona. Uh, it was lobster paella, and it was a restaurant that was built in 1700s, oh, and nice. it was unbelievable. I, I'd never. Had I would like say the stuff at, stuff everything. at this shack in Ibiza was maybe the best paella. I've ever had. Really? I mean, it was just, you know, you know, it, it was. They didn't say lobster paella. They throw into it whatever they had. You know, yeah. it's it's kind of like leftovers in a, in a beautiful dish. And and this one was uh, for two people. You know, you. you oh, well, get a, here's the thing that yeah. pissed me off. When I, yeah. I went to a beef the ones by myself. Yeah. Okay, and I go into a restaurant and they go, uh, "What would you like?" And I would say, "I want the paella." And they say, oh, no, senor, por dos. So mm -hmm. you're only for two. And I went, then give me the paella anyway, and I'll yeah. eat it all. And they went, okay, but it's por dos. 
And I went, oh, yeah, that's fine. Give me the what poor dumps. Price? I wanted it. I wanted it. And I was going to eat it. And I had money. And I didn't care what it was going to cost. So here to insult me, they bring me the paella. And next to me, they put down another plate with a fork and a knife. Yeah. <laughs> you might have invited someone over. Well, it's like, if we're doing it for two. So as your other... I said, I don't need the plates, you know? And I ate most of the paella. You know, maybe didn't eat all the rice, but you know, I ate all of the the little goodies in there. It's like uh, it's like a uh, a pinata of food. You know, I mean, just all the stuff comes falling out. You know, but great pie. I going to Italy, and the hotel we stayed at. Remember, we saw what was it like a uh, Ferrari mm -hmm. parade. Oh yes, there was a parade of Ferraris. Yes, there's we your LV truck. No, there, 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 there. That, yep. there that's oh, that's that, it. That's Vedra. Yeah. That's Vedra. Yeah. yeah. Or we went to that wow, little that hole, hole in the hole, hole in the wall restaurant in Italy, and they treated us like family. We 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 went into or just this. I won't call it a dump, but it was just you know it was like a little family restaurant, and they said okay, and I said well, would you like? And I said just send bring us stuff. You know, yes. that was one of the best meals I've ever had in my oh, life. Absolutely. And they treated us like family. It yeah. was just fantastic. Yeah. And and it was very slow. It was like, you don't it, the don't eat fast. Take your time, right. you know, uh, and just enjoy it. And so we yeah. did exactly that. And it was wonderful. Just and wonderful. their tira tiramisu was to die for. Yeah. 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 It was just fantastic. So anyway, you know, it, 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 that was in Lake Cuomo where we were. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But and uh, then we went to Bregenz, Austria. Remember, because Gary had set up the whole trip for us, and so we had one where we're like, okay, it's a free time. Where are we going to go? And we're drive, drive, drive. And we end. Let's. How about Bregenz? Well, here, Austria? here's how I would do. Th I would. Oh, here's how I would always do it. Okay, and that was that I would. Uh, um, um, just, I would decide that here's where I want to be one day, and then I'm going to have to wind right. up somewhere else. Like, we were right. going to wind up, I think, in the south of France. Yeah. And then you have about two or three days. So along the way, my business manager was making hotel reservations when I knew where we were going to be. So he yeah. found us a place in Lake Cuomo, and then we went up into, uh, up into, uh, was, was it, it wasn't Austria, it was... Uh, Switzerland. Well, right we went through there. that small country. And Switzerland. No, not Switzerland. This is a small country. A uh, Liechtenstein. Liechtenstein yeah. is a real small country. Liechtenstein. We went to Let me put it this way. We were lake, and we went to it. All of a sudden, there's this tent, and they're having this huge Oktoberfest. Yeah, but if you if you go to Liechtenstein, Liechtenstein, and you're driving and you sneeze, you missed Liechtenstein. That's how yeah. small it is. So you drove. You didn't take the train. It's so much no. easier to take the train. Yeah, well, no, we no. It's so much better to drive because you can stop and look at stuff instead of seeing it go by. Well, you you know? And we were train. able to read a map. Yeah. Remember those? No, oh, we <laughs> love uh, driving's the best. You know, it was. Uh, except when we were coming down out of uh, we were coming down out of uh, Zermatt. We had to go. Oh, up the mountain. yeah, the Mont Blanc. No, no. Uh, oh, you were on the other side. Are you talking it, about the Furpa Pass? Yes. <laughs> and that road scared the shit out of me. I don't know about you. If I had a quarter for every time he said the f bomb, oh my gosh, we would all be millionaires. I mean, it's this. I, it's I this. It's, wait a minute. It's this. It's this windy road going down a a mountain with no guardrails on the side of the road. Just sheer cliffs. I <laughs> drove from Paris uh, to Milan, and I had to go through the Mont Blanc tunnel, and there was Zermatt. Uh, the Matterhorn, the Matterhorn, right in front of me, and I said to myself. If you if if there's a heaven, that's it. No, well, totally. we will, well then yes. you'd like what we had. We would wake up in the morning and look out our window, and there was <laughs> the Matterhorn. Yeah, yeah. you know, well, right? I, I, and right I next to it, right next to it was the other uh, mountain they have, the What's a Matterhorn? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's what's the matter with you? Yeah, uh, and and it was it was pretty good, pretty uh, pretty. Uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I was ready to move there. It was just gorgeous. Well, what it's we funny because guys would come up to me and say Sprechen Sie Deutsch because 
I looked like the epitome of a German woman. I was like, no, se habla español y fala portugués. And they're like, what the? Well, we had, we had, a, uh, we had a, a travel agent uh, yeah. who booked a lot of this stuff for us. Yeah. And the travel agent said, I've done something. And he, she, the travel <laughs> agent told you, she told you, wear a wedding ring. Oh yeah, yeah. I wore yeah. a wedding ring in every hotel and, we and went to. And every hotel we went to, wed. she told them ahead of time they're newlyweds, so be nice to them. So they would upgrade us to a better room. They would send Throw things up to the room. And robes at us for us to take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, that's the that, that's what you should do if you ever go to Europe, go on a long trip. Just ahead of time, tell them, well, we're going on our honeymoon. You know, yep. so that's what we did. I don't know where you got the ring. It was some. Did you buy it somewhere cheap or? It was just a bow. It was a gold band and it had a nice big, uh, you know, CZ on it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they couldn't tell. Woo! Yeah, it was a ring pop. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. that that was uh, that was the best way to handle that uh, situation. Yep. But, but yeah. you know, the most surreal thing was landing in Paris and staying, what, two blocks from the tunnel? Because we landed in Paris and watched the funeral from our hotel room in Paris. Yeah. Well, this thing is turned, turn, well, we saw Diana had just died. She, yes. she had died about a day earlier at that overpass that we she were like. She died a, like a week earlier. We were there for the funeral. I mean, we were in that, France. That's, that's, that's the interesting because about a month after she had died, I took my family there, and we went. Uh, we were at the uh, at the Ritz at the Vendome, and we had uh, breakfast or our lunch in the same restaurant that she ate in just before uh, well, she and we Dodi were, Fayed we, we, left. We were uh, there. We were there before the funeral, and about yeah, two days right. after this Passed happened, and all the, the all the news people were there and everything, and people were putting flowers on this. Uh, oh, I mean, we just saw. There, there's I mean, a uh, there's a, a the, the Statue of, of Liberty had a a actual other Statue of Liberty that they made. Yeah, that they the, kept. yeah. There's and the flame them. from it, it was the centerpiece of this particular thing, and they wow. they had all the. Uh, uh, now I, I was there at Easter Easter Sunday. Uh, it was the the day I was at the uh, at the Ritz at the Place de Vendome. Mm -hmm. So was uh, how, when did she die? Oh, we can't see that. It's blurry. Uh, uh, oh, it's, it's, well, it's there. hanging up in my um. Back back it off. Yeah, there she is, Diana. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a magazine from Italy because yeah. every country we went to, I bought a uh, magazine with her on the cover. Because yeah. she was everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and she so, was. Uh, she is a. She. It was really. Um, oh, there's Tom Yamaguchi. Let me see here. Got to get Tom in here. There, was. here comes Tom Yamaguchi, folks. Hi, Tom. Hello. Uh, we're we're talking travel adventures. I know uh, you're talking about exciting places like Paris, France. Yeah, yeah. Not uh, an exciting place like Paris, France. <laughs> exciting place like Paris, France. Are you being facetious? Well, no, I'm I'm in San Diego. That's not very exciting. Oh, you're in <laughs> you're in San Diego right now. Yes. Well, and in what do you old, what do you hometown of Ocean Beach? Oh, so you you went home for to see your family or whatever? Or I've come down for my high school reunion, my fiftieth high school reunion. So there are two events happening, and I just got back from the first event. Mm-hmm. There'll be another event happening tomorrow night, and then I'm going to come back to the Bay Area. Well, meanwhile, in Paris. <laughs> in meanwhile, it's 96. But, oh, wait a minute. Uh, it was uh, August. He died August 31st. Uh, Dodi Fayed died August 31st, 1997 mm -hmm. uh, okay. at the Pont uh, de Alma Tunnel. Yeah, well, that's okay. where we were. Now, uh, but I was there in... Doesn't matter. Uh, we were Easter. there. We were there before you. Okay, we were. We were there. It doesn't yeah. matter, Phil. We yeah, were there, so there right after it happened. Afterwards. I'm. In fact, we had. Uh, uh, we were there in September because remember UPS went on strike and right. we were like, oh crap, because the strike was going on for three weeks. And I remember telling my boss, hey man, I've got. I'm going to Europe for three weeks. Well, you know, we 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 got we uh, uh, we we knew that the you know she had just died and we were going to Paris and we went yeah. what's going to happen there so we went to the hotel and we slept that night and then we yeah. woke up and we walk out and uh, you're going I've got the video of it I mean I've got a 
four almost four hour video of this vacation. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's online yeah. if anybody wants to look at it. Um, no, you won't see her tits. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, it it was a um, uh, but but you walked out and we started walking and she says, "Oh look, there's the Eiffel Tower, right? Because there it was." Yeah. And I said, "I think that I've got something better than that. Look over there." And there were all these people with, uh, yes. around these flowers and everything. Yes. And she, you the said to, you said to me, massive. "What's that?" I said, "That's where she died." Yep. You know, and and the news people were there. I mean, they were they, sh they hadn't even buried her yet in England. Nope. You know. No, so. they didn't even. I remember b being in the hotel room. Boo! You know, we were watching the funeral, and I was, you know, it was sad because was. her kids, her her sons were so young. I don't know if we were watching. Well, the funeral was taking place about the time we were there. Yeah. We yeah. watched it from our hotel room. Yeah. Yeah, well, you also watch this, porn in our hotel is, room. This is hard to see, but these are all the flowers that were oh, left yeah. out in front of well, uh, Kensington uh, Palace yeah. uh, for Diana. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's a sea of, of uh, flowers. flowers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it was, uh, you know, I mean, it, it was one of those vacations. It was a, a vacation that I took that I said, this is, I'm just going to do the best vacation I can do. And yeah. I said, and I, I knew you at the time, and I said, you coming with me? You oh, know, absolutely! And, and she said, "Of course." And we uh, we we did it, and uh, we had a great time. And uh, uh, you know, then I get, you know, I uh, I hope I take a vacation soon. I haven't taken a vacation since we uh, went to uh, China, uh, and I've got we got to take we got to take a vacation. So I think I'm gonna we're gonna head out for. I don't know. What have I told her I wanted to take her to see? I, I, I would I would have loved to have taken her to Ibiza, but not anymore. You know? Not now. You know, that's uh that's a thing of the past. Uh, yeah. but what I'd like to do is take her to Spain and go down the cost of the soul. Yeah. And just eat tapas all the way down yes. the, the cost of the soul. But um, and I think that's what we'll do. I, I think it's time I take her on a vacation or show. She'll never talk to me again. You can't get her a full meal. You got to just get her appetizers. It, well, you yeah. know what, I mean? no, what happens is here's what happens in all the bars in that part of Spain. The tapas are free. Yeah, they're free. But you only you get a tapas every time you buy a drink. Yes. Now I don't drink, so yeah, I don't but, know what but I would do. Marjorie can have her red wine and have tapas. Yeah, but what about me? I'm not going to have any. I'm, uh, you know, I, uh, give me a Coca Cola. Well, no tapas for you. <laughs> you know, I mean, but but and supposedly the tapas some of these places have are just phenomenal. You, know? you like sangria? I mean, that's that's pretty benign uh, a drink. Yeah, but you know, I don't. I, I'm just not a drinker. You know, I'm yeah. I'm a I'm a teetotaler. In fact, most of the women that I went out with over the years. We're not drinkers. And it wasn't until I met up with uh, Marjorie <laughs> that I suddenly realized how much a meal could really cost, you know, <laughs> because one drink is about half of a meal. Oh. I mean, they're yeah. charging 12, 13 bucks for a drink now, you know. And yeah. she can't have one. She has to have two. That's her thing. I got to have two, you know, uh, which, I, you know, I don't mind. She gets drunk and beats me. So it's, uh, it's very fine. funny. Well, listen, I want to talk about a few things. Um, uh, did you hear what happened over at Fox today? Is Shepard Smith uh, made room for you to possibly uh, get a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shepard Smith, who was in the middle of a three-year contract, decided to quit. Oh, uh, and, uh, what? I didn't hear that. Well, I've been out of it today. So yeah. Shepard Smith decided to quit. And, you know, Shepard Smith, of all the guys who are um, uh, over there, is probably the most principled. I mean, he just he's just not, doesn't play the same game the rest of the – hello, for, uh, Jeff. Uh, this, the same game the rest of them play. And it's rumored that he was pretty sick of the antics of uh, some of the nighttime hosts and being part of this Fox thing, which kind of had a stink to it. And well, I think he was he was the news guy. He wasn't opinion. 
And uh, at Fox, they were saying today that they have two uh, two deals. One is opinion and one is news. Well, yes, but sometimes you can't say they don't separate the two. I can t- I can show you shows during their news periods that there is opinion. OK, Phil. So they're lying to you. Uh, but he he felt uncomfortable, I think, being at Fox at this point, and he left the job. He he he's pissing away a couple of million bucks, and Gosh. on top of it, on top of it, he has a non compete contract. So for the rest of his contract, he can't work anywhere else. He was there twenty three years. Yeah, yeah, but he just he's he's had it. He you know, he's just had it. So uh, so he just said. I'm I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Uh, the the guy that was describing it today said that he'd been making uh, uh, noises about wanting to quit or retire uh, recently. Yeah. Well, it isn't a matter of retiring. It's a matter that he was he's sick of what's going on. He he doesn't like. Oh, uh, and then yesterday Trump I think did a tweet. Uh, yeah, Trump went after him, savaging him. And he just said, that's it. You know, I don't need this. Uh, and I, I take my hat off to him. A real principled guy who says, I can't live with this anymore. This is not, you know, my idea of a good time. So, uh, yes, Tom. Well, I was also thinking, you know, uh, Mike Wallace's son, uh, was it Chris? Chris? Chris Wallace? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what his politics are. but. Well, I don't. I well, don't know I, that he is. I don't know that no, he is, he, Jason. He's, he's I don't know. I've never. I've never heard him. I've never heard him, you know, express an opinion one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, and I've always and I've always had a lot of respect for him. And I thought, like him and Shepard Smith, that I thought that you know they were there because they were sort of like, like to there to say, okay, Fox, you say you're a legitimate news. News network, you know, let's let's show it, let's prove it that you're a legitimate news network, and, and that's why we're sticking around. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was just wondering what this means for Chris Wallace, who's also been very, 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 um, let's see, critical of, of Trump in, in recent weeks as well because of of everything. Well, as Shepard Smith posted a couple of weeks ago on the show on his show, said, uh, you know, the trouble with Trump is he just lies and lies and lies and lies. And mm-hmm. that, that is not something that rests well at the Fox, uh, in the Fox universe, as it were. Uh, what do you think, um, Josh? Do you think, um, did you ever watch Shepard Smith at all? Not really. I mean, I'm aware of the situation. I did saw that he, uh, or did did he uh, quit today? Or resigned? You know, I really don't ever watch Fox. I mean, it, just nothing for me there. I mean, because I don't feel like they're going to be, you know, a fair arbiter of the situation. You know, and that's not what I'm looking for. I mean, mm-hmm. Fox is a mouthpiece for the RNC. I mean, let's their slogan is fair and balanced. You know, what do you mean? Let's face it. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I, I never really watch Fox. I mean, but. Uh, I've always heard what, you know, you're saying about uh, Shepard Smith over there. And a little bit, you know, the same with Mike Wallace, because... Me, Chris. Think, uh, or, yeah, I'm Mike sorry, Wallace. yeah, because... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's a little more... Because I think he anchors their, you know, their weekend coverage that's on, you know, regular Fox, not the news network, mm-hmm. but, yeah. you know, their uh, morning show. So he's pretty well known, but... I mean, good for Shepard Smith, I guess. I mean, he'll probably end up somewhere eventually. Well, he, he, hey, not, he not in the next couple of years. He's not going to well, be able to work. Maybe they'll waive that or something, you know, I don't know. Well, but, he may have a lawyer go in and negotiate yeah. the non Maybe they'll settle. He'll pay I him believe, or, I believe hmm. legally, and I've been told this because I've been in this kind of situation before, that if, uh, let's say you have a non-compete clause in your contract, and now you are you quit. Um, I don't know if that happens if you quit, but I know if you're if you're uh, if, if they want to let you go, they have to keep paying you. Yeah, uh, uh, and you can go get another job, uh, and whatever it pays, they still have to pay the difference between what you were making with them and what the new job will pay. Now, right. in his case, 
they could use the non-compete clause because he's quitting, I think, and saying, yeah. you can't work. But yeah. I think they're going to yeah. have to pay him. I think there's going to have some, be some kind of remuneration. I may be right. I may be wrong about, about this. That. Huh? Right. What was the – News Corp was the name of uh, Murdoch's company. Mm -hmm. And News Corp owns Fox. Do, right. do they still own them? Mm -hmm. uh, well, w uh, News Corp stock – uh, went up quite a bit over the last 20 years. I don't think he's worried about money. I think he's got, you know, he's probably got a lot of News Corp stock, and he's, well, he's I mean, look, pretty good. I, I don't think it's a question of worrying about money. I think it's a question about you want to work. You know, yeah. he, he's in his prime. Uh, if he sits, if he cools out for a year and a half, two years not working, uh, the public will forget who he is. His value will wane. So you know. He's probably made enough money, though, anyway. He's like, fuck this, I'm no, done, I'm no, out. Well, <laughs> I, I think he probably, part of him says, I've got enough to take care of myself for, for the rest of my life and live nicely, uh, and I don't need this. He could well, be a pundit if he wanted to and yeah, not get paid. Gap, no, no yeah. hey, Phil, Phil, non-compete means non-compete, whether you're getting paid well, you or don't, not. You don't get, really, even if yes, you don't get paid? non-compete is non-compete. It means you can't go on the air anywhere. So does that mean he can't be a part of the citizen panel? No, he can't be no, part of the citizen panel. <laughs> we're, we're the only lucky ones. <laughs> Damn yeah. me and my non-compete clause. Yeah, well, I'm going to have you all sign non-compete clauses <laughs> because, you know, especially Tom, you know. Yeah. Uh, does that mean he can't call in the Jack show? That, that's right. You can't call in the Jack show. <laughs> He's very competitive. You know? <laughs> Well, I mean, if he wants to work, I, I see what you're saying, though, if he wanted to work, you know, because he's a he's a newsman, you know, and if that's what he wants to do. And let's face it, there's a lot of fucking news right now. No, right. Uh, I mean, it's uh, a good time uh, to be a newsman. Uh, Kathleen hey. remembers when I was fired, I was let go in San Francisco and they still had a year and a half on my contract. You had to pay or play they had to pay or play. And so consequently, they were. I was getting paid uh, oh about uh, three hundred thousand dollars a year not to work. Okay, over the period of time that I was out of work, they had to pay me four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yep. All right, and people go, that must be great. And I went, no, you, you oh. know, I, you saw me. I mean, I, you, yeah. I, you you can't do a show anywhere. You know, my nope. you know it was it was very difficult for me. It was kind of a living hell because I liked well, I having a show. I felt horrible for you. Hmm? Hey, I felt uh, horrible for you, and that's when I found out all the hanger honors. Yeah. Well, you, you find know, out. Everybody went to the wayside. That's when you truly found you, out. You found out. Find friends. out who your friends are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Phil. Uh, you're a hypochondriac. I need to know what is the uh, what are the symptoms of a concussion. Um. <laughs> Well, you, become, uh, I don't you, 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 one of the things is you think Trump's good. That's, yeah, well, no, that's that, one that, of the that parts I had before. If you're I felt. seriously not feeling good, Phil, you should go get checked out. I got too much to do tomorrow. Well, I don't uh, care. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, a what are they going to do if you got to, if you know, well, I what, hit my what, head. What are you feeling? What are you floor? feeling? What are you feeling? And then uh, Phil I, never I'm not, up. I'm, I'm not, um, nothing. My eyesight's not clear. Hey, why don't you have uh, your living, whatever she is, um, yeah. do a concussion test on you. Cover one eye, that? shine a flashlight in it, see if your eye dilates, then uh -huh. do the same thing with the other eye. Uh, one eye idea. should be able to dilate. I mean, you might go to one of these walking clinics oh. or something, although I don't know if they're open up this late. But uh, Well, yeah, Kaiser's got a thing. But, I, you know, that, that's I something mean, you I, could do in my five shoulder minutes hurts. to find out if you have a uh, yeah, no, that's what I'll do. I, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I didn't know what they would do. And even if so, if you have one, what do they, what do they do to you? Well, I'm, I I'm know, Marjorie, so Marjorie, 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 Marjorie fell on mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the what do you call it? The doormat that we had here. Yeah. Going out one night. Oh, similar deal. And uh, hit her head. And she actually yeah. got a concussion. She got concussed. Yeah, and she went to a doctor, and they gave her. A, they put her in an MRI, and it looked. It said nothing. You didn't get uh, something terrible here, but you're going to have headaches for a while. And uh -huh. she's had. She had headaches for a while. Yeah, you know? and just uh, like football players have concussion protocol, yeah. you know, so stuff that they have well, to do and I, keep I an eye on. And I definitely broke the fall with my elbow. 
mm-hmm. and my shoulder. Mm-hmm. But I know that my head hit the floor. It was a concrete floor. Uh, it had carpet on it. But uh, you know, I, can, can you do? Can I just can ask you? you let me roll? let me ask you a couple yeah. of questions. Can you that do might, a head roll, Phil? Yeah. Let me yeah. ask you a couple of questions that might help us uh, determine whether you concussed. Uh, how do you feel about Donald Trump? <laughs> oh, uh, he's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> nope, he's good. <laughs> he's got, he got some sense knocked into him. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, I what it. can it hurt getting checked out? Well, it, it's... Uh, I know it's in Tomorrow, I'm going on a Coast Guard cutter, and I'm shooting uh, the Blue Angels again. And uh, and I want to go. Well, maybe you don't go. Maybe you don't go. Maybe you go to the hospital and you just have them check you out to just make sure. Say, I took a fall and I want to make sure everything's okay. Uh, I'm going to do what Jason said. Uh, I'm gonna... He's going to go on the cutter. Yeah. You, you, you said you're going to go follow. shoot the Blue Angels again. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got I got away it. with it the first time. I got yeah, a, I, I do. I, I do it every year. I got enough trouble with friends and having medical problems. Yes, uh, Tom. <laughs> just reminding me of why I'm so happy I'm 600 miles from the Bay Area right now. Oh, the Blue Angels? Yeah. I, can't I hate the it. fucking Blue Angels. Shut I mean, oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I, I would I, be up on the lucky. roof of Alex's so apartment. Yeah. Happy as a clam watching that. And he goes, well, Kathleen, what if the Blue Angels slam into the Golden Gate? And I had my video camera. I said, I'm going to get it all on film. <laughs> They'll raise the toll. Well, the I know what. No, building. you know what they used to do. The Blue Angels, these stupid fucking assholes. Between the buildings, they they would yes yes, yes they yeah. would no what they would do the day before the show, mm-hmm. they would have a rehearsal. Now mm-hmm. I don't know what you were supposed to do when they were rehearsing. Don't watch. Don't look up. They're just rehearsing, you know. But they would do a rehearsal, and their rehearsal wasn't going over the bay. Their rehearsal was going over the buildings in San Francisco. And their wings are missing a building by about that much. And I'm going, you know, one of these days, these assholes are going to crash into somebody. And I kept, every time they did that, I was putting them down all the time on the air saying, this is dangerous, it shouldn't be allowed, (laughs) you know, especially over a, a, a civilian airspace. And people would say, how, that's horrible of you. And finally, one day, I get a call from the Blue Angels. They want to take me up. <laughs> I wish I had known you because I would have gone up in your place. Yeah, well, I think maybe you did know me at the time. I mean, they, but I remember no, them asking I didn't. me. Okay, we don't care. Oh, we don't care about nice. your lens. Anyway, the the point is, is that I uh, um, uh, I I said to them, no way, because I know what you guys are going to do. You know, I'm going to sit in the back of that plane, and it's going to become the vomit comet. You know, well, they don't um, want you to puke in their plane. Well, they, but they don't mind if you puke in your mask. You know, <laughs> uh, and I just I I said that that uh, no no nah, I ain't going to do that. So. See, when they do the show over by me. I have a, a air force base right by me. Mm-hmm. They uh, you know they fly right over my house. That's where they turn around at. Is yeah. like right over my house. It's pretty sweet. It's like, dang! I just hope you don't go too low and hit my house. Yeah, yeah. Well, That's and they the, uh, and also Detroit when Tops. they did their when they did their rehearsal, it was like on a Friday, and I got my nap in the afternoons because I did a morning show, and I would try to sleep, and I couldn't sleep because it would roam right over my building. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm, I remember I'm, my my boss let me off early, and I was at your apartment, and this is when you had the two apartments back to back. So mm-hmm. I was in the old one, and I'm in the window, and I'm talking to my boss. He's like, "What's going on over there? Are the jets going over?" I go, "Yeah," and I started to talk, and one went right over, and the sound came right down North Point. Is the and, old one yeah. the one that was on the street side on on Beach or? Uh, it was on North Point and Broadridge. North- yeah, uh, so it was on the street side. Yes. The, the other one, which I was never in, was behind it. Well, no, behind it. it the, behind, I had one apartment behind it that didn't have a. It didn't looked out on a. Uh, didn't look out on the street. Looked out on the garden uh, the yeah. building next Backyard. to us, and 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 I had a, uh, you know, a, a little deck there that I could get yeah. to through a window, but. Uh, At the kitchen, probably, where you go down to the garbage thing. What? Well, we just come out of one apartment and go on the catwalk to the other one. Yeah. We were just right right, uh, next to each other. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was, was that was the Phil life. was never in it because you got a restraining order by then. The, yeah. <laughs> Did you come to that apartment, Phil? I was in the one in the front right after the earthquake. I hadn't talked to you in, a, in several years. Yeah. And uh, but right after the earthquake, I went over there to see if you needed any help because I had a big truck and I mm-hmm. and I helped a number of other people yeah. get their stuff when their buildings uh, were uh, red tagged. And uh, so, you know, I, I came over and I said, hey, you know, if you're red tagged or, you know, and you need to get your stuff out, I'll, I'll help you. So yeah. was that after? No, I, was, I, I, yeah. uh, I didn't start seeing Kathleen until after the earthquake. Cause... Yeah, it was like not October of 96. Yeah. Yeah. So this was what, 89? 89, right? October yeah. 89. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's the only time I was in that apartment. I was in Sausalito a lot, but uh, yeah, not yeah. Uh, not that one. But anyway, so um, what else is in the news? So we got Shepherd. oh hey, yeah. I went and got my um, real ID, and guess how much it cost me? Nothing. Twenty eight dollars. Thirty six bucks. Oh, d- did you get? Oh, I just well, renewed mine. Because I had mine. to renew my license, and I didn't. I did the real ID thing yeah. just in case I want to fly. Yeah, well, yeah, I my, did. My license I did. is good for a few more years. I, I so did the re, I did the real ID thing. Yeah. Are you sure went, you did the real I, ID and not the enhanced ID, which does cost more? Well, no, it, they're they're all uh, in this no, state. All, all I know is here in New York, I got the I got the one that's got the star on it or whatever. Yeah, you we know. get a bear. A golden bear. Well, anyway, it's no. We, you need the star. A star. A star. A star. Not the the no, you got to get a star uh, on yours. Uh, I'm not sure. I thought we get a golden bear. No, you, you know, don't, uh, Kathleen, because no, you know. well, I don't get it for another two weeks in the They're, mail. They, they've been talking I federally. It well, anyway, how much do you think they charged me? Uh, nothing. Hundred. You heard me say it before, right? No, I didn't hear you yes. say it. I just guessed. See, she well, remembers what I say. A hundred and ten dollars. It cost me. See, I think you got the enhanced ID, not the real ID. I think he got fucked. Well, I got the thing where you got to show your passport, you got to show a, yeah, uh, you, a you bank statement, you got yeah, to show I had to a, do uh, utility bills, yeah. I had to, I had to do the passport. Uh, I had to show a paycheck with my social security number because I didn't have a social security card. Uh, G- Jason thinks he's the only Mexican in this country. They, 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 they keep saying that. They keep saying that within the year, within, I the, within the year, they're gonna you're gonna have to have these enhanced uh, or whatever uh, IDs, real IDs, uh, uh, yeah. real IDs in order I to fly. But that's a lie. If well, you've got a passport, you can use that. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't really need it. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. There's a difference between the real ID and an enhanced ID. But they'll both still work the same as far as getting on a plane. And the same thing, like you said, if you have a passport, you can yeah. use that also. Jeff's been real quiet tonight, Jeff. Uh, I was <laughs> at a show tonight. You what? I went to see a show tonight. What would you go to see? It's a very strange show. Uh, I don't even know the name of it. It was in New Haven, and it was um, about gay people, black, mostly gay people, in Houston mm-hmm. in, like, the 60s. Hey, I saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, that, that would... <laughs> it, it, 50s? It, it, oh, wait. Give me an update. You know the name of it. I, I, it. It I try to get the other person to do the work around here. <laughs> You know, unless you pay them, yeah, it won't help. Uh, that's how you be successful. You got to delegate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, uh, being being gay and black in <laughs> Texas in the '60s uh, was up a little higher. Yeah, had to be the most the dangerous. Of belonging. The most dangerous thing you could possibly do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, when was when was I there? What years was, were, was I there? I think I was there in. God, I can't remember. I think I was there in about 68, 69. Where? Yeah, in Houston. Oh. Yeah. 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 And uh, it was, you know, I, I can't imagine being gay or black. I mean, I was there with, yeah. I was there with uh, uh, Jack Bishop. Um, yeah. at that He's time. gay and black. No. Hey. But, Biden's gay. He but, just he came but, out last night but, on uh, but, Anderson but, Cooper's show. But my w- wife and I, um, my wife and I uh, would uh, go to walk down the street. Ronnie would walk down the street with Irv, and uh, <laughs> uh, we would uh, we had a special little thing we would do 
we would walk. I, he was black. I was white. And uh, we would walk down the street with her. And uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. I've got you got a, Ray Renati. I got Ray Hello. Renati. Wait hey, a minute. Hold, hold on a second. Hey. We would walk down the street. I'm out with dogs. We would walk Sorry. down the street in Houston, Texas. Okay. Hold on a second. Uh, let me change pictures here. Doggy. Yeah. What? Hey, look at that doggy. Yeah. Uh, he's dog. assuming the position. He's assuming <laughs> oh, the no, position. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why have I got such a small picture on you? Hey, Ray. Uh, does does your dog lift both hind legs to pee? Sometimes, uh, my, yeah. Mine I lifts a, just the left left leg usually. And she's female, I, and sometimes I had a dog. Female. I had a dog named yeah. Kipper, who was the most retarded dog in history. And and when when he first uh, uh, we passed him one day with a bunch of other dogs, because in those days you could have to let your dog run free. Okay. And you'd see your dog as you were coming home down the street with some other dogs or whatever. And they're all going over to a tree to pee. And then when it's his turn, he goes over and he squats. Mm -hmm. And we were so embarrassed for our dog. You know, <laughs> come on, lift the leg. You he know, we, squatter, huh? we gave him lift the leg lessons and he couldn't learn. It, he always Tom's squatted. Has, yes, huh? Tom. Yeah, I say, I, I used to walk a dog at Chihuahua, and that's how she would pee, or does pee. She she lifts both her hind legs and balances herself on her front legs to do it. Cow. Really? He said, no, she's a, 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 a ch Chihuahua. Wow. Nice. Uh -oh. Chihuahua. Well, maybe she would balance on her front feet and lift front, both her yeah. back feet? Yes. She basically did a handstand. Yes, exactly. And then yeah. where would the pee go? On the ground. Yeah. Really? Didn't like go squirting somewhere else? Well, downward. I mean, yeah, she yeah. looked at her back. Her back what? was lifted up, the legs off the ground. Yeah. And yeah, she, and, and she would be able to piss. Boy. So, Alex, your dog was a squirter? My dog was <laughs> retarded. <laughs> retarded. Retarded, eh? Yeah. <laughs> From Massachusetts. Trump has a dog Boston. that lays on its back. Trump yeah. has a dog that lays on its back and pees and gives itself a golden shower. I, I just heard this. Dog, <laughs> Trump does not have a dog. Uh oh, oh, I got. Oh, I must have read that on the fake news. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, listen, that was uh, his son. <laughs> let me go. Let me go to uh, Josh for a second. Josh, what what in the news has been uh, appealing to you at all? Anything? I'm just following the daily uh, developments of our forthcoming impeachment trial i guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean you know that's uh that's the main story he, you know, he, i will say what aggravates me about this whole thing though is they call someone to testify and you know they don't come because you know they're told not to and they can't and they subpoena them and they're going to deny it and you know so basically the legislative branch will take it to court etc People always ask me what constitutional changes or amendment I wish we had. I wish that we had, in these situations where the executive branch is going to sue the legislative or vice versa, especially vice versa, I think it should just fast track straight to the Supreme Court. They can decide it right then and there. We can get this shit figured out in a day or two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's what they want to do with this kind of shit. Deny the subpoena. Don't follow the rules rules that you have to follow put it off put it off put it off because it'll go to the courts and they want to mm -hmm. tie it up for months if not a year 14 15 months i say bullshit we, that shit should go straight to the u.s supreme court yeah get it decided get it done uh, you should yes, do the same minute. thing with the rentals in new york when you have a beef go <laughs> yeah. straight to the supreme i wish court. we yeah. could none of this, i none wish of this we could stuff. i mean we just got a bill today for thirty five hundred dollars because our lawyer was studying oh <laughs> He was getting ready for the trial, and and then the trial never happened. So it, it's He's happening never in done December. This before? I, it's it, you know it's just got, getting to the point. We didn't do anything and spend this kind of money. We spent almost sixty five thousand dollars so far. Yes, uh, 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 Josh, Jason. Uh, Jason. So I am maybe a couple of days behind because actually I'm having a hard time actually downloading your show. Nobody else's, but off of iTunes. Um, but uh, did you already talk with Phil to see how he might feel about with Trump removing the troops from Syria and letting the Turks come in and bomb our allies, the Kurds, who helped us do all the fighting? 
uh, I only said that uh, the generals had recommended that he not do it, and he didn't listen, and it doesn't look good because they bombed uh, a um, prison that the Kurds were holding ISIS prisoners in, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't think that they need escalation. I, I, I think that they made a mistake, but then... I also said that Wait, I think who that, made a mistake. Let me, but it was uh, like it was like uh, uh, Trump. It was like but, er Erdogan was sitting so there I waiting just, on his you haunches. Have recorded that. that but have been there's that. one. It is recorded. There's one <laughs> other. There's one other issue. Erdogan and the United States and a number of the countries in the Arab, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, Middle East, have been uh, at loggerheads, especially Israel, and I. Th and there's a chance. Uh, this is pretty Machiavellian, but there's a chance that uh, Trump did this to get uh, the, uh, they're going to put big sanctions on uh, the Turks, but maybe also the Russians and the Iranians will go after the Turks. But, but for, why would for you have in. to even do that? Why would you have to go to that point? To, I, 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 I don't just know. Said, that, hey, I we're, said we're doing this. If, if it, let's say if it was some kind of cunning plot that he had in order to solve a problem, uh, he certainly didn't do it. You know, he uh, in no, fact. That's why I said it was yeah. Machiavellian. I mean, you know. yeah. I mean, I, I think that uh, that uh, the what he did was uh, dangerous to America. Was, was dangerous to America. It was. Dangerous to it, the was world. it was. It was dangerous also to our reputation with other countries that we might want to that, have a relationship. Saying, we don't have a reputation. Dangerous. We don't have a reputation with other countries. But according to the news, they all hate us, and they're laughing at him, and, and so on and so yes, forth. Yes, so they do. Reputation is not the issue. The issue here is that I think he made a strategic error, and uh, but we'll see how it plays out. Gee, Phil actually says that his, his boy may have done something That's because wrong. I'm honest, and you never Trumpers are not. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I I happened I, I the other day I was sitting down saying I've got to say something nice about Donald Trump, and I'm still thinking about it. It's taken right. a while. Don't, don't hurt yourself. It's taking a, a while. I, I will say a <laughs> nice thing about Donald Trump. If I was a gay man, mm -hmm. I think that Donald Trump could give a really good blowjob. I'm sorry. There's something about his lips. He looks like he could suck a mean dick. <laughs> it looks like they're always ready to suck, don't they? Right. They're always kind of suck he's, he's always there. yeah. It's like uh, they're Ronan, always out there. I think Ronan Farrow yeah is also Donald Trump's son. Doesn't he look like Baron Trump a little? No, bit? no, no. He looks no, like yeah. Frank Sinatra, nah, who is on. is no doubt his father. Because if if right. if, if you want to say that Woody Allen's his father, what uh, part of him looks like Woody Allen? No way! It's Frank Sinatra. Man. Look at the yeah, yeah. It's so obviously Frank. You yeah. might have to ask Trump what part of him looks like. Woody. And, and I think that if he was really Woody's son, he wouldn't be going after Woody like this. You maybe know. he's got a Woody. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he's got a Woody. <laughs> anyway, but I mean, um, he's got a Woody for uh, for uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Weinstein. well, you know, you know what? Today they were doing this whole thing. They've really been going after Matt Lauer the last couple of days. <laughs> the guy. <laughs> Who are they going after? No, they're going after uh, going after Matt Lauer a lot because oh. of the book that Pharaoh wrote. And in it, uh, this woman tells her story about how he wanted to, he ass fucked her and all of that, you know. Um, and then, um, and and while it would ring true, if if true, uh, the fact was that she went back for seconds, thirds, and fourths. Okay, and, and I don't know, but as a woman, Kathleen, if if some guy did something untoward you and forced you to have sex. And I think uh, he'd be dead on well, the wait. Second. Well, let's say she was a little shorter, okay, uh, and not as muscular. But uh, would you go back for seconds, thirds, and fourths? No, absolutely not. Only, only the and then on top the of that, parts. her, according to Ronan Farrow, her uh, source of uh, corroborating what she did was the woman that she told the story to, which was Ann Curry. But Ann Curry has it out for Lauer because he's the one that got her fired at NBC. So they should know. probably refer to Wednesday's show when we did the reenactment. Oh yes, when you, do you still have them there? Do you still have the? Uh, 
The window oh, kitties there. These used to be in my window, my kitchen. We called them the window kitties. And when we, uh, when I left California, she inherited the window kitties. There we go. There, the, there is Matt Lauer and uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Not that the woman was black. What she happened? wasn't. But what? Matt Lauer butt fucked the woman that didn't want to get butt fucked. Yeah, yeah. What it, yeah. What he, well, he said, "Would you do? You, do you like it in overseas. the? Do you like it in the? Do you like it in the butt?" And she said, "No." And then he said, "Oh, come on, try it or something like that." And she said, "No." And the next thing she knew, she had a dick up her ass. And she was crying in the pillow. And oh. she was crying in the pillow. And then she and went back country. and cr cried in the pillow three more times. You know, that's the part. You don't go back. You know, she went. Well, I was. But she said she was worried about her job. She didn't work for Matt Lauer. She worked well, for Mer power. she worked for Meredith Vieira, who did who was being who was hired to go to Sochi uh, as an independent contractor, but was not a member of the Today Show team. And but, so but see, here, here's my whole point, though, is if I found out tomorrow mm -hmm. that I'd lose my job unless my boss ass fucked me. Yeah, I would not. Did it hurt? I would not go there. I'm sorry. I'm some people might like it. That's fine. But I'm not like that. I want to go there. I want to do that. I would say, you know what? I'll see you in court, buddy. But they didn't even work in the Asian? same. They didn't, didn't work, work in the same environment. <laughs> you know, Meredith Vieira. I don't know. She was an independent contractor. I don't know where she was working at the time. And she was the assistant to Meredith Vieira. So as going back, second, third, fourth, and fifth and time. That, that's why I heard that she was afraid for her job. She was afraid for her job. Because of his influence. Oh, he's going to tell Meredith Vieira you got to fire her because she wouldn't butt fuck, let me butt fuck her? You know, I mean, it I just. It sounded more like a rape, not uh, a consensual thing uh, from what the way it was described. The way she described yeah. it. The first one. But again, said. again, if you get raped, do you go back for seconds, thirds, and fourths, and fifths? And I know that you're going to say, oh, well, you know, this is the way the psychology of, of this kind of situation goes. I mean, she's a victim. But no, I know a lot of women who've had a bad uh, situation with a guy, and they just never went back and had anything to do with that man again. Have, have you ever had that happen, mate? Kathleen, where you had some guy force himself on you and you didn't want to do it and it was an ugly, horrible situation? No, you know, the, I mean. I mean, besides, besides, the, me besides the times you. I UPS. Yeah, I'm, I was I'm, I'm saying. I drink of water yeah. at the drinking fountain yeah. and this one dude, Toby Chavez, came up behind me and slapped my ass and went <laughs> to the break room. And I followed him in there, and I grabbed him, and I slammed him up against the machine, and the place was full. And I told him if he ever did that again, I'd kick him in the nuts so hard it would lodge his cock up his ass. <laughs> and then I realized God, I everybody was looking at me, and then I just dropped him and walked out. Did yeah. he reach around and slap your oh, ass again? No, no, man, because by that time, no, but I was you know, I was going to say I had a reputation. <laughs> was it ever? I mean, like Xena Warrior Princess. Totally. Did I mean? Did you ever have a time that was so ugly that it was, you know, it was Never. like? Except, except when you dated me. Uh, yes. You know, it was, I make that exception. You know. No, never, never. I would never put myself in that situation. But if some, if, if it did happen, you would never, you wouldn't go back for more, would you? Oh my God, are you kidding me? Yeah. You no. know, I mean, I just, I just find this, and I don't like Ronan Farrow. I think he will believe anything somebody wants to tell him that looks like it's going to get him another Pulitzer. You know, as soon as I heard his name was involved, that like just discredited ah. the story. I thought, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the lady could at least have bought some extra lube or something like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. But Thinking I mean, technically, you know, technically. not a problem. problem. <laughs> yeah, time out. You know, I mean, at what point is it? At what point is it rape? And at what point is it suddenly a consensual relationship? Look, he keeps he threw going her on up and against on. the wall. He yeah. pulled up her dress and he stuck his dick up her ass. That sounds like rape to me. Except oh, that rumor sometimes has it, women she like said it. She cried into the pillow. So did she have the pillow up against the wall? <laughs> no, that. 
could have been afterwards. They didn't give you a timeline. Was, it, was there a witness? So you're telling me if Matt happened? Lauer were to run for president, you would most definitely vote for him. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, because no, he didn't he, grab her by the pussy. He shoved he, it no, up because, her ass. No, because 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 this is the new normal for the United States, uh, Josh. Uh, you know. Uh, so anyway, uh, sounded like rape to me. It, yeah. It, well, it. How how does he know this happened? How Ooh. how does he know? Ronan Ooh. Farrow. Oh, how does he was Ronan there. Farrow... <laughs> but, but how does it sound like rape when she goes back and has sexual relationships yeah. with him multiple times afterwards? You know, I don't. I don't think. They, I don't think that's the mo of a woman who gets raped that she goes back for more. I think they Just said that they dated for a couple drunk. of months. Didn't they say they? Dated yeah, they for, dated for a couple were, of months after that incident. Okay, so maybe she thought there was something there, but is, he was married. Yeah, he, yeah, they were having an affair. Uh, yeah, and, ah. and what he says is, yes, it all happened, you know. Yeah. But it was all consensual. But it was consensual. But it was consensual. consensual. And, and it may have been. You know, maybe you know, this is uh, a payday. What What's her uh, situation right now, uh, employment-wise? I don't know, but, you know, I mean, uh, it's just that I, I, I want to believe her. You know, I think we always should go out of our way to believe a woman who makes these kinds of claims. I think that uh, too many times over the years they haven't been believed. But, Why wouldn't you but, believe but, Matt but, Lauer? But when, 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 he's so when, trustworthy. When, but when you've got this woman and she goes back th four other times to have sex with him and her corroborator on the, and the woman she told the story to was Ann Curry who got fired at NBC because Matt Lauer didn't want her around, so she's got a uh, hard-on for Matt Lauer. It just is all, it's all kind of hinky. And then it's Ronan Farrow, you know, which gives me the willies. What do you think, Tom? I'm staying out of this conversation. I don't know anything about this. Oh. Yeah. I haven't read the book. I'm not going to pass judgment until I... get a chance to get more information. I'm just staying uh, out. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah, that's fair. You know, that's fair. I mean, but uh, this should not maybe be... Maybe she went back. Huh? All right. So what? maybe she went back and, and he and he said, oh, I promise I won't put it up the butt anymore. It was an accident. <laughs> and then, boom! It just <laughs> fell in there. <laughs> one. Well, and you then know, he could... it, it's no laughing situation. But uh, right. on the other hand, I think that we, we have to, you know, we can't, we, we're too quick to judge. Uh, you know, and, and I feel I, I it's not like I feel sorry for Matt Lauer, but I feel kind of sorry for Matt Lauer. He was yeah. blinded by the light. <laughs> you know, know. He, he hit the wrong Wrapped spot up like a douche. Well, it's yeah. it's just <laughs> it, 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 it's just that, you know what? Because Ronan Farrell wrote it in a book doesn't necessarily make it true. I think everybody's giving Ronan fair because he wrote the here's the thing. He wants His father's to, Jewish. Wait, he wouldn't let, let me let me explain the third Stool, uh, uh, leg on this broadcast stool. He went after, in this book, NBC for not doing proper diligence in this case, okay? Although they fired Matt Lauer the day after they found out about it, okay? Um, uh, but he just savages NBC, and he savages NBC because he goes back to the story that he was going to do on Harvey Weinstein when he was working at MSNBC, um, who hired him, by the way, as an anchor and then demoted him to just a reporter because he was such a terrible anchor. He was this whole horrible anchor. Uh, but he came up with the story on Harvey Weinstein. But he didn't have any materials to prove it. And so, you know, the lawyers at NBC look at the material that they hand him and, and they say, we can't do the story yet because this material isn't, isn't vetted. You know, it's just all rumors and stuff that you're Here's you're going me. by, and and a company like NBC, you know, they they they're careful about crap like this. So he left Not NBC. What I heard he, today. He, he he left NBC, and he I went. I heard I heard today that NBC uh, Ronan Farrow was accusing NBC of covering this uh, up to protect Weinstein. Well, yes, that, that's what he's saying. But he would, he, they wouldn't do the story, and they said they wouldn't do the story because it wasn't vetted enough. Well, he went over to New York. He went over to New York Magazine, 
and he got more stuff so that he could prove it, and he published it. But he was always uh, had a hard on for NBC for not letting him run the story. But they didn't want him to run the story till he had the proof. Not because it was Harvey Weinstein. Well, because it was Harvey Weinstein, they knew that there would be a lot of litigation in there if the story were a lie. Okay, and that they just wanted everything legally that they could have at their disposal to be able to prove the story if they ran it. Uh, and, and Weinstein had deep pockets and, you know, would probably turn around and try and sue them. And they wanted to be able to say, well, you can sue us, but here, here's the material. We, we can prove you did this. Okay, and, and uh, Ronan Farrow always had a hard on for him because they, he wanted to go with the story when he didn't have enough proof. So... Uh, well, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Tom's yeah. got his Tom. I have a question then. Yeah. He had the sources he needed but with New York Magazine. Yeah. But he didn't have them with NBC. Yeah, because he, he so, is about, so a, about a year. About a what year. Was the difference? I mean, obviously. Well, the year, a year, he wasn't going into New York Magazine with the same stuff. He had, in the, in the intervening time, which was maybe six months to a year, gone out and crossed it, dotted his I's and crossed his T's and then went in New York Magazine, who probably had a lower bar, uh, bar yeah. because they weren't as corporate as NBC, who said, okay, we can publish this, you know. Uh, and they did, and he won a Pulitzer for it, you know. And uh, uh, it was a sensational story. Uh, but NBC, I think, was very right in not running it at that point. Their whole point was, it, it, we told them to go back and get more stuff. You know, we're not, they weren't trying to protect Weinstein. And that's Ronan Farrow's take on it because he's pissed off. Fuck him. You know. They basically wanted evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah. Um, I, I think we should do a book about how he's Frank Sinatra's son. You know, uh, I can't believe somebody has a secret. Doesn't Ronan Farrell look like a little boy? He he, he he looks like a little he boy. He looks like Baron Trump. I'm sorry. No, he doesn't look like Baron Trump. Yeah, he does. Baron he Trump doesn't look like Donald. He's like though. a little boy. How old is he? Huh? He he he, he, he looks he, so young. He uh, he's a uh, how old is he? I wonder. I, uh, Probably he's 12, be... 13. Yeah. Oh no, uh, 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 the uh, Ronan. Ronan no, Barron. Baron. Oh. Baron. Oh, oh yeah, Baron. He's yeah, twelve. Like twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you ever know, notice? Every now and then, Ray Renati's head just looks like this floating head in the abyss of blackness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, okay. <laughs> the, the, this is Woody Allen around the same age as uh, uh, Rowan Farrell. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, did you just see the resemblance? No. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen this guy. I'm going to have to look him up. Huh? Huh? I said I've never seen <laughs> Ronan Farrell. Oh, I'm sure you'll see Ronan Farrell any second now uh, because Phil yeah, is I mean, uh, thank you, Phil. looking thank him you. up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Resemblance. yeah, yeah, that looks just like Ronan Farrow. I'm sorry, I was yeah. so wrong he to even... just like his father. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I get Ronan Farrell. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, uh, I, you know, I'm... It, rumor has it that he's Frank Sinatra's son, and I think there's a good chance of that, you know. I, I just, I don't know if Frank was still seeing her when he, she was going with Woody. That's the problem. You know, but it could... It just looks so much alike it's crazy i mean i don't know how you yeah i mean you, you, yeah he looks more like frank sinatra's son than frank sinatra jr did okay oh, totally. ronan ronan no, farrell no that's that's yeah. matt. <laughs> that's matt lauer phil I, very funny <laughs> jeez um yeah. no you, get a picture of ronan farrell okay I, i'm getting it yeah, get, get one up. Oh no! This is a this is a video. I don't want that. You don't want that. You just want to no. go to, go to just go to Ronan Farrow and then yeah. Hit yeah, here the we images. go. Very nice, Ray. <laughs> it's Halloween. <laughs> okay, there's okay. Okay, that's not Frank Sinatra's son. No, 
I see the I see the resemblance. Uh, it's Matt Lauer's son. Yeah, right. No, is, is that is that or is that not Frank Sinatra's son? Come okay, on. we get a we get a young Frank Sinatra. Here. Yeah. Well, you, we don't need a young Frank Sinatra. You get a Frank it's Sinatra. It's the mouth and everything. It's exactly the same shape. Yep. 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 Okay, you're gonna get a picture with Frank Sinatra. We all know what Frank Sinatra looks like, Phil. Yeah, look at that. Okay. You got that. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see if I can get back to uh, uh, the other one. Uh, and this. No uh, resemblance whatsoever. Oh, yeah, no resemblance whatsoever. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, yeah, sure. But, you know, blue eyes. Come on. You know, what color is Woody Allen's eyes? Yeah. But anyway, we, and we lost oh, Frank. That's a good question. What color is Woody, now? Woody Allen's eyes? What uh, color is Woody Allen now? <laughs> Uh, well, who, who, what was the song about? Some, Wait a minute. Let's see Ron and Farrell again. What color are his eyes? If they're blue, I'm pretty sure. If huh? Uh, they look blue. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They're blue. That's Frank. Okay, come on. Right. To begin with, Woody Allen had features that were, I think, more dominant than Mia Farrow's. Okay, so that uh, you know, does he uh, have blue eyes? Betty Davis eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or no, who's the other guy, the comedian that had bulging eyes? Uh, oh, uh, it was, it was uh, a Marty, Marty, Feldman. <laughs> Marty Feldman. Marty Feldman eyes. Yes. He's got Marty Feldman eyes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah look, look at that. You see the resemblance? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just the glasses. That's that's all that's doing it. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, he'd look just like Ronan Farrell. Yeah, yeah. You're out of your fucking mind. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Um, but I, 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 you know, I, I felt, uh, uh, you know, I just, I, the, this whole thing with this book of his is just kind of skeezy, you know, and I, 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 I learned a new word skeezy. I mean, I wish that we would look upon things that when we take things, we take them into a court of law and we prove them or disprove them. And we don't skeezy. sit around uh, writing books about what might have been, you know. Shit. Uh, and that that's what bothers me. Um, uh, and this is Woody Allen. Yeah. Who's that? That's Ronan is the younger man. Yeah. 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 Brought to you from Skeezy Publications. It's skeezy Publications. <laughs> it's the skeez factor. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, anything you wanted to talk about? Because uh, we got one minute left, Tom. Well, as I said, I've been sort of out of it today. I mean, the last uh, I heard was uh, that uh, two friends of Rudy Giuliani uh, were trying to get on into a plane to Vienna yeah. and uh, were stopped by the, the FBI. Or actually, no, it was the, uh, uh, this, was it the district? Southern District of, of, uh, of New York, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah because uh, they did one of them away. And they were it, supposed to testify. In the investigation regarding uh, funneling lots of money into the uh, Republican Party yeah. uh, when they and themselves, others. when they themselves are not very good for paying their own debts. Well, so yeah. there's a lot, of, a yeah. lot of interesting stuff here. I don't know if anything's happened else today. Has any anybody heard anything more on? On uh, on those arrests, they were actually they no, they actually no. arrested actually they arrested three people and they're looking for a fourth. Mm. And, well, uh, I just like how that guy Fruman thought he would be clever and change the last name to Furman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Furman's uh, not uh, a good name to have either. Yes. Hey, listen, uh, we're uh, we're out running out of time here, uh, but boy, it's been been fun tonight. Josh, good having you here, Phil. Lovely having you here, uh, Kathleen. And, and Kathleen, you have been you have been a, you have been a welcome addition to this program. You've improved it fifty percent, oh. uh, but don't think that that's helped it because Phil then comes on and brings it down fifty percent, so it all evens itself out. You know, uh, uh, thank you, Phil, for ruining my show once again. Anyway, uh, uh, also like thank you to Josh. Thanks to Tom. Thanks to uh, Jeff. You got a bloody nose, Jeff? Or is... Oh, I think I do. Oh, okay. And, and thank you, Ray. Uh, our man in the dark. Boo, you're yes. making me very frightened and scared. 
Would uh, everybody like to give a big wave goodbye to the audience? And we'll see you all uh, hopefully next week. Come back and see us. All right. That's our citizen panel, folks, for tonight. Uh, and uh, I appreciate them. They're really, really good at what they do. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next with the intersection uh, right over all of these same uh, GabNet uh, facilities. He's here with the intersection. And then uh, next week, uh, we'll be here after Damian Chaplin does his fine little program at uh, 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And then I'll be back again on, uh, uh, at 10 o'clock that same, that same night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.